just go on to our Sage 200 website. Um, there's like a little button that says kind of about our pre-recorded webinars. If you go onto there, there's a there's all of our webinars on there, all of our previous ones. If anyone's missed them or if they want to share them amongst their um, your colleagues, it's literally go on the Sage 200 page. There's um, a button and it takes you through to all the recordings. OK, so um, brilliant. Thanks, uh, Sunny. So this is, uh, as I'm sure many of you are aware, we're kind of doing fortnightly Sage 200 webinars at the moment. Um, we kind of, the last few ones have been weekly because we've had a few extras we wanted to squeeze in. But uh, um, yeah, they're kind of like a fortnightly thing. Um, as we've said previously, if anyone has any ideas or topics that they would really like to see covered, please drop it in the chat or um, send myself or send me a message um, just about things that you'd like to see, because obviously we're thinking about things that you might want to see, but you guys are best placed to tell us what it is that um, you're wanting to find out more about. So uh, yeah, please feel free to drop us a message if there's anything you can think about. Um, and then today's uh, is going to be about making the most of analysis codes within Sage 200 um, and providing greater reporting. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Sentney and he'll be able to run through that with us. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Bethan. So as mentioned, yes, we are recording this. Um, I have muted everybody for the moment. If you want to ask questions, and please feel free to. If you use the raise your hand option, which is towards the bottom of your screen over the meeting controls and Bethan's going to keep an eye on that uh, and just sort of shout if there's anything I need to be aware of. Um, so obviously most of you, you all use Sage 200 here, so I'm going to share my screen so you can see what we're talking about. And this is going to be a fairly short session this morning, but hopefully it should give you an idea um, as to exactly what you're going to see. Uh, I'm sorry, I've just clicked the wrong option. Apologies, everybody. Brilliant. So if all's going according to plan, you should all be able to see my Sage 200 screen. So analysis codes were introduced into Sage 200 um, about 12 years ago in their infancy. And over the recent years, they've expanded and stretched. They were originally only around the sales ledger uh, and the purchase ledger. They've now spread into the nominal ledger and into stock items. And you can use them on sales orders and purchase orders and what have you as well. So it's, it's quite probable that most of you are, are, are using some kind of analysis codes. And certainly, Chris, I know you've got quite a good number set up. Um, but for those of you who aren't aware of what they are or where they are, um, for an example, I'll just wait for this to load up. You can see they're here. So this is breaking things down by you know, the account manager, the customer type, or, or the region, or whether they pay by direct debit or not. So, for example, internally we use the direct debit option. Um, that means that when you get an invoice, if you pay by direct debit, it puts um, some wording over it, which I'll I'll show you later. Um, that, that uses it. So as an example, if we look at the Python boating company, you can see they're set by direct debit type as yes. So as Blue Peter says, here's one I uh, prepared earlier. And as you can see, very simply at the bottom, it's instantly put that line in around for information only. So you can use that for layouts. You could use that on reporting if you wanted certain information and you can use it. You can add criteria to reports to take that into account. So again, from a sales point of view, if you're using analysis codes and you want to report on perhaps what your particular rep is doing or what the region is doing, as you can see, all these are analysis codes that are in there. Um, so if I want to see what is going on in our Scotland region, I can click OK and it will just filter that out. It tells you obviously as of now, Health and Sage 200 at the bottom of the report, the filters that you've used. So it's a great tool, particularly if you've got sales teams who operate on a commission basis or something like that to see where everybody is. Um, and indeed, if you've got different products or anything else, you can use it for grouping. And we'll go through that in a little bit. They are really simple to set up once you've got the hang of them. And everybody you've got will have a account system manager. So it is an access right that allows you to set them up. But looking at the people on the call, most of you will have access rights to be able to create analysis codes. So 
I can create one analysis code and have it in numerous different areas of the program. But for the moment, I'm just going to add a new analysis code type of uh, test analysis code. I'm going to allow it whether it's free text or not. Generally, I tend to advise not to have free text purely and simply because if you have it to free text, any slight change in variation of text entry will mean the reporting doesn't work for you. Um, so we tend to leave that off. But I'm going to put true or false and I can put a default in here as well. So going back to our direct debit example, if the majority of your customers didn't pay you by direct debit, you'd probably set the default as false. So once you've set it up within the main system, you then need to set it up on the particular ledger. And that is under utilities, ledger setup, and maintain analysis code. It is in the same um, screening area whether you're in the sales ledger, the purchase ledger, the nominal ledger, or anywhere else. I'm showing you the sales ledger. I'll, I'll drop into another couple just, just to give a really good overview. But as you can see, I can then put the drop, hit the drop down here and look for my test analysis code I've just created. If I wanted that to have a different field label, so I want to put that to webinar code. For example, I can and it can make it mandatory. So if I want to make sure that you do have to have that set, I can take that. I'm not for the moment, but quite simply, if I now go to a random account on the list, you can see that that's already there and I've got the drop downs that are specified. So that's how quick and easy it is to set up analysis codes within your Sage 200 environment. You can add them to criteria for reporting. That can get a bit more complex, but obviously under your safety and support contract with ourselves, we're happy to make minor changes and set those things up for you. So by all means, if you've got a couple of reports you want to add it to, just drop the support team a line or give them a quick ring and they'll be more than happy to set those up for you. So as mentioned, they also follow through into the nominal ledger and you can have um, depending on which ledger you're in, either 10 or 20 different analysis codes with almost any number of values against them. So I haven't got any set up in the normal ledger, and I appreciate people use their reporting structures perhaps to manage to group nominals together. But if for some reason you had two separate nominal codes in two areas that you wanted to be able to group or report on, then that's a really great way of analysis codes are a really great way of doing it. This only came in about three years ago, so if anybody is on the older version, you might need to have an upgrade to get that. Looking at the list of who's joined us today, I do think you've all probably got it, but if not, give me a shout and we can discuss the options for you. And again, a great one to use it on is stock. Um, so for example, if you wanted to group um, dangerous chemicals together, or if you've got items that were corrosive, and you wanted to link them in a different way, you could. My screen, because I'm on a webinar, has decided to hide everything at the top. There we go. And you'll see actually in stock, it's populated some analysis codes without a drop down value, but I can actually create a new value on the fly by giving it test. So if I wanted to report on that, then I can. So there are all sorts of areas you can use this for. Um, again, if we look at the sales order, that's live. And apologies, this is demo data. I know most of you won't have live or live orders with the date of 2018. Um, so hopefully you'll you'll all forgive me for that. But we can actually do an analysis code on the line if we wish to. So you could have a different sales error, different in this case sales error or person, or you could have it set that on that line you want to put some kind of warning note on the delivery instructions or something similar. Or you can have it actually on the order itself. You see down here, I expand my screen a little. 
you can put the salesperson on there. So if you're not necessarily signing a rep per sales ledger account or purchase ledger account, if you were doing it on purchase orders, but you want to do it on who's done the individual order, then obviously you could have the salesperson have a drop down. Okay, I've got nobody in there, but you could set that to Bob Bobbins and then run a report every month to say these are his sales and therefore you can work out your percentages or whatever else from there. So again, it's a really quick and easy way to calculate and use tools. Again, we could use that for putting something different on the layout. Um, so for those of you, for example, that use Spindle, you'll know it automatically sends documents by email. If for some reason you have an account where you didn't want it to email, you always wanted it to print, then we can set that up using um, an analysis code. The default would be obviously to, to run Spindle as normal, and then the option would be to exclude it generally. So that is pretty much a very fairly quick whistle top tour of the analysis code in Sage 200. I'm happy to go and show you more. I'm happy to discuss it further with anybody. Um, but I don't, I'm don't. aware you're all pretty busy people and I don't sort of want to go on and, and bore you with anything. So any questions? Just to make you aware you are all muted. <laughs> If you are all muted, please do raise your hand if you if you've got any questions or anything you want to ask. If not, you can always drop us a message um, uh, afterwards and ask questions kind of directly to Sentley or um, someone else within our organisation, and we'll direct them towards Sentley. Yeah, by all means, and obviously appreciate you know there's no such thing as a, a, a bad question. You know, I, I'd rather people ask than, than not use this great functionality, which Actually, a lot of people do use, but perhaps don't realize quite the areas it can be used in. OK, so OK, looks like no one's got any questions. That's great. Um, OK, well, thank you everyone for attending. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, as I said at the beginning, if you do have any topics that you really would like to see covered, no matter if they're just a really tiny topic that can be covered quite quickly or if it's, you know, like a larger thing, please let us know um, and then we can incorporate that into another of our webinars because we are doing these fortnightly. Okay, brilliant.